is, last but not least, Doreen Ware is going to take us through uh, KBase. And KBase, uh, well, I should probably go into a little bit of an introduction, uh, is a resource uh, that's going to be available or is available through the DOE. And it's a, a wonderful collaborative hire plant and offers up uh, some new opportunities. So let me get your slides loaded. And you can take this mic while I find your uh, Thank you. deck for you. So thank you all for staying. So this project is in a relatively early phase compared to some of the projects that you've seen already. So the IPAMP project has really been an ongoing project for the last five years. Grameen has been a project that's been going on for a few years. And, and that project is really um, more involved with setting standards, reference resources for genomes, and some of the available views and things, analysis that you see. What I want to talk to you about is um, KBase, which is really started about two years ago. So it's, a, it's at a very different stage of the project. So I'm not going to be going into details of how you might be using this. But just giving you highlights, especially because this is a meeting that's focused on networks, and that's one of an area I've highlighted there. And to give you an idea of, of where the project is going, who's involved, and timelines to expect it. So uh, on the project, um, as I said, is funded by DOE. So the iPlant project is funded by NSF. The knowledge base project is funded by the Department of Energy. So they're funded by two different independent agencies. And I'll tell you a little bit more of that. The KBase project is very much DOE mission oriented. But what I want to focus on is the tools that would be developed for that mission oriented focus can be used for other basic sciences. But the main motivator is DOE. And DOE and the whole objective for this was to stand up sort of very similar to iPlant infrastructure to be able to support the DOE missions with the understanding that with the big data coming along, there would really need to be infrastructure to support the ability to filter information, focus attention on different areas to support asking the right questions, and really to bring communities together um, communities together to work on problems. Because as you know, there, although you have your individual science, quite a bit of science today is done in a group setting. So it's really the fact that, and you've, most of you have heard this, there's an inflection point right now with the data size and the amount of data that you need to be working with, the different types of data you need to integrate, the amount of algorithms that are out there, and the fact that I just mentioned that things are multidisciplinary. So the objective of this was to be able to set up the framework for data and modeling for predictive biology. And, and if you take a look at this, there are some key words that were set out. It was to be collaborative was to basically support hypothesis-driven research. It was to be open and extensible. And really, the background set up the ability to capture as evidence and assertions to be able to uh, focus on assigning biological function. Okay? So, uh, oh. so Adam Arkin, who's actually the lead on the project, he has a philosophy of launch and build. OK, so as I said, this is two years old. So it was like uh, flying in an airplane that was barely there. And so this is where I don't want to highlight things, just the directions that we're going into. It's being stood up by the four national labs. So if you're not familiar with DOE's infrastructure, they have the national labs. And these are really the infrastructure that supports long-term objectives for the Department of Energy. So there are four national labs involved in this. Uh, at, that is Argonne National Lab in Chicago, Oak Ridge in Tennessee, Lawrence Berkeley Livermore in, in Berkeley, and Brookhaven National Labs um, here on the island. And then there are also several universities and academic institutes, research institutes, and Cold Spring Harbor is one of them. So it's 80 people, a lot of different expectations, a lot of different diversity of skill sets. And this will just give you an idea of, of the size of the group and the room that we were in at Berkeley for our annual retreat. So the whole idea was to lower barriers for, um, for science, open access, many of the things that you've been hearing there, the idea of leveraging minds, crowdsourcing for the solutions, to have it reproducible. The whole idea is that you could observe someone else's workflow and reuse the same workflow. And then also to be able to support um, provenance for the data and the tools. So the driving philosophy um, is, though, on this project is everything's a model. And for those of you who just saw uh, the, the assembly work by Mike Schatz, um, most of us who work in, in, in plants 
forget our reference genomes or models. And for me, having been involved in some of those reference genomes, uh, a model can always be improved. Whether it's the underlying reference assembly or the structural annotations, we often forget that they're all models. And the whole idea of this project is to start up to set up the infrastructure for us to have versions of models that could be built upon and be iterative, and then for the community to basically add things to be able to support that. So some of the targeted activities were basically function and inference of the genomes and reference genomes, modeling-based uh, support, and this project has a real strength in metabolic, um, metabolic and regulatory networks. The whole idea is that we'll be able to have the infrastructure to add measures of confidence be able to have models that you could share with other people and support user communities. In the plant, there were from the RFA, so this was the call from DOE, where they had a very, very, very structured list of exactly what was supposed to be done, and the reality is, is things change over time. But the point was is that there were seven um, targeted genomes. Well, uh, there were seven targeted genomes that were identified in the RFA. These were the seven targeted genomes, but the infrastructure is being set up to handle more than these genomes. We, in the first two years, really focused working on popular and Arabidopsis, and the reason why to focus on that was very much that Arabidopsis has quite a, a large breadth and depth of data to actually support modeling and testing things. And in DOE, we had some very strong popular collaborators to actually prototype things on, and so you really want friendly people to work on. I'm not sure why this is off the, off the screen a little bit here. I'm sorry about that. But um, we targeted, um, in the first phase of the project, what we wanted to say were um, four areas. One was working on just calling variation. Another one was setting up the infrastructure to deal with network analysis. Another one was the infrastructure to deal with metabolic modeling. Uh, flux balance analysis, and the other one is a higher level genotype to phenotype. If you look at most science, most people are going genotype to phenotype, but we just use that here. So Mike Schatz is also on the project, so he actually has been responsible for calling the variants. And then what you see here is, is what you actually um, should see here is just sort of an outline of what we have for the variant calling. But what we really focused on is having intuitive displays and visual analytics that people could actually work on. So this is what we've been prototyping because most biologists want to work with those type of visual displays. So in the, in the last um, year, we've actually been working with close collaborators, as I said, in Poplar, and we've been prototyping with Jerry Tuscan and Steve DeFazio's group. We used it, this infrastructure to support identification of variation in lignin composition. We also, with Steve DeFazio, looked at it to test, to identify some new hypothesis for testing in uh, uh, cold uh, in dormancy and cold um, in budding under cold. So this was a proof of concept. And you could see actually the proof of concept under what's called labs um, if you go to KBase, and I'll show you that. But the point is, is these are prototypes. These are very early stages. We're not at the point that um, iPlant is right now. So the principles of this were being um, based on infrastructure that would support hosting of the data, hosting of the tools, and also, more importantly, hosting the metadata associated with this that can support experiments. And the idea that there were data generators, users, and then also software developers, so it's a broader community. And the idea of moving forward is that, in theory, it should be easy um, to add additions of new standard uh, services, that the infrastructure behind this, once again, is the National Lab. They have a very, very robust grid infrastructure for computes. Um, it's a different grid than the grid that you heard about earlier, but it has very similar functionalities of being able to support cloud computes and raw and cloud infrastructure as well as computes. And that as well, they would have things to address data and IP security in a distributed environment. So it's both much like iPlant, it's both a platform and an infrastructure. The platform will have the models, the user interfaces, the um, application programmers interfaces, and the data store. And the infrastructure, once again, is the hardcore servers, the um, lines that go between the servers that support the speed and the security that they have. So the initial platform that we have been working on, this is what most people call a cake layer model. Most of you guys aren't interested in it. But these green, um, green portion here actually 
shows you some of the services that we've been standing up. And these are all things that basically will support the analysis and the data integration. And I don't have time to go into it. And I'm also telling you this is at a very early stage. But for those of you who are developers, if you want to go and start looking at this and what the developer toolkits are, that's already in place. For those of you who are more bench-based biologists and want a graphical user interface, we're not quite there yet. And the release of the graphical, major graphical user interface will come sometime in February or March this year. So I think the important thing for this project is, is that there will, there will be key linkages to other infrastructure projects. So one of the things that actually happened over the last year is there is a memorandum of, of agreement between NSF and DOE that these two infrastructures, iPlant and KBase, will be able to support exchange of data and authentication between those. And those are things that are developing. So the, from my perspective in the plant community, you should be able to go to iPlant or you should be able to go to KBase and you should be able to get the best of both worlds and you shouldn't be limited. So the idea is, is as the infrastructures are maturing and the underlying data, um, the data services and the APIs mature we, and the authentication set systems are set up, you should be able to, in theory, log into accounts and move between them. But there are some things that need to be still put in place for that. So if you go, here's the home page. And as I mentioned earlier, if you go to labs now, these are the early, uh, early versions of this. Um, there's documentation and resources that are available, quick start guide, calendar of events and, and things. They also have a pretty active Twitter, Facebook, for those of you who do that, and it's a very large team. I also want to basically say that when DOE started up this project, they actually had three science drivers. They had plants, microbes, and microbial communities. And what happened in the first, um, first 18 months of the project is we had this very hard deadline for prototypes. So all the groups were focusing on their own initial needs to make their deadlines for their drivers. And what's been happening over the last year, the project, is we've been solidifying the platform and making sure that the services that each of the for instance, if you want to call it the, uh, the advocates for their organisms were looking at, that these services now can be actually used across the group. So what's really nice about this is this one of our target drivers for the next year is looking at examples of plant microbe interactions. So we'll have, the example, we'll have the infrastructure to handle microbial communities. We'll have the infrastructure to handle uh, uh, association analysis in the plants. And we'll have the infrastructure to look at biochemical pathways and things in microbes. So it starts to tie in the things as, as uh, a larger community. So that's all I have to say. And I just want to alert you to keep your eyes open. But I also want to say that at this point in time, the infrastructure is really set up for developers. It's not set up for people who want to use a graphical interface. But we are going to be looking to solicit more engagement of the community of, of what I would call um, data generators and data knowledge seekers to use the system in about February or March of this coming year. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so thanks uh, very much, Doreen, and thank you to everybody uh, who's uh, stayed with us the entire time. There weren't any online questions, but if you're online, uh, as, as we said, please go ahead and uh, sub continue to submit questions. Uh, we'll answer them offline. For everybody, uh, the last thing I'd ask you to do, two things, is just to go back to the wiki. Um, at the bottom of the agenda is the post survey, so we'd appreciate people taking the survey. We'll follow up with you and email you also online. Uh, you'll be getting a survey uh, just to make sure that the quality was good for, I think the peak attendance was a little bit over 200 people uh, that were watching online with us today. Uh, so we're really happy uh, that all of you uh, came. For those of you uh, joining us for the meeting, welcome to Cold Spring Harbor. I've been here, uh, it'll be 10 years in a, in a few weeks so that I get another week of vacation. So I'm counting down the days. Uh, for those of you who are already at Cold Spring Harbor, uh, take the food with you. Those of you here for the meeting, you'll have plenty of food, but for anyone who's already here, you might as well grab the uh, sandwiches we have in the back. Uh, we'll be uh, here for a little while uh, before we transition to the uh, first set of talks this evening. Uh, and if you haven't been drowned in iPlan already, you'll get the final um, lashing. 
uh, with, the, with the talk that I have. I'll go to some of, uh, a little bit more detail in some areas. Uh, but thanks very much to everybody, and uh, we're around for any other questions you have. Thanks again.